Hey everyone, welcome to Kibbe on Liberty. We're doing a series of special interviews this week from Porkfest in New Hampshire. This is a project of the Free State Project and it's a gathering of libertarians and constitutional conservatives, Republicans, uh, we even had some uh, converted progressives here who are looking for liberty and we're hanging out in this beautiful place and these conversations are gonna be awesome, check it out. So, so thank you guys for doing this. Uh, I, I'm gonna start with a story. I was at uh, Blaze TV Studios a couple weeks ago doing some shoots and doing Glenn Beck's show, and I mentioned the Free State Project. And he's like, what's that? Thank you. He's like, what's that? And, and I started to explain it, and uh, I probably did a, a, a crappy job explaining <laughs> it, and he was very interested. So this show, in a sense, is an opportunity to explain to not just uh, the Free the People community, but Blaze TV community, what you guys are up to here at the Free State Project and Pork Fest. And as far as I can tell, I've done investigations, <laughs> and you guys are the instigators. <laughs> we certainly are this year. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Carla, why don't you go first and just give me a little bit of your, like your, your Liberty origin story and, and when you moved to New Hampshire and, and all that. Sure. So, I mean, for folks who don't know, the Free State Project is a movement of voluntary human action where we are trying to concentrate libertarians in the state of New Hampshire. I, uh, I think I was born libertarian. Maybe we all come screaming and pooping into the world and we're just libertarian and then the world tries to take that out of us. But my origin story is I grew up in South Africa, so under apartheid and uh, won a green card, was like, oh, hell yeah, I'm moving to America. Got married, came out, did Silicon Valley, went through the bubble, went through the burst. And that was actually where I became curious about a name for how I felt. And in the searching on the internet, as it is, I went down several rabbit holes, a lot of monetary policy, and then found the Free State Project. And I was like, wow, I think this is a really cool idea. I'm very, very solution focused. And so I was like, I wanna do something where it matters. I don't just wanna dick around, you know, I wanna actually have liberty in my lifetime. So I read the essay, I heard about it, I didn't vote. So back then people could choose. We had 10 states and people could kind of go, uh, you know, different reasons, whatever. But New Hampshire won and it won because it's a really low tax state. It has the live free or die slogan and ethos. I mean, that is it's really It's already on the license here. plate, so that work is right? done. Right, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I don't even have to change that. I mean, I, I'm trying to refocus it to live free and thrive. Because I'll tell you this, man. Yeah, who wants Live to free die? or die does not play well in a pandemic. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> um, and so I moved out from New York City in 2008. In fact, you know, I, we'll talk about it in a bit, but I had finished my MFA in uh, City College. I heard someone say City College. Was that you guys? No, no. No, someone met at City College. Anyway, uh, and then moved out in 2008. And as the saying goes, Never looked back, you know, yeah. just hit the ground running. I found my people, I found my tribe, and, and I've been organizing Porkfest or being involved in organizing since 2009. I came to my first one in 2005. And, and to be clear, uh, and I'm sure you've had this happen to you, but Porkfest is not a barbecue competition. It is <laughs> not. It is Porkfest, P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T. But you know what? If you show up and you're looking for pork with a K, you're going to find it. Yeah. You're going to find probably I, I, anything you're really looking I've for had good, here. I've had good barbecue, but it's the porcupine, which is sort of, I guess it's the official symbol of the, the Libertarian Party, but it's just sort of our symbol, right? Right, because you know what this movement needs is more pricks. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis, can you follow that? Yes, yeah, yeah. Can I follow more pricks? Um, uh, so, yeah, you know, the porcupine, I, I think, was actually the FSP symbol before the Libertarian Party took it oh, on. Oh, interesting. Uh, so, it, and, and one of the main reasons why New Hampshire uh, became the winner 
was because of the first uh, uh, Park Fest. What was it? What was the name of it? Uh, Escape. Escape to New Hampshire. Escape to New Hampshire, yeah. which was done as a way of promoting promoting and, and what year was New that? Hampshire. What year I think was that? that was four. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and so uh, you know, people, we, we we threw a big party up in the mountains. It, was, it wasn't called Pork Fest, but we call it now Pork Fest One, uh, and that was actually what caused people to uh, become. Uh, to, to say that the Free State Project should be in New Hampshire. Uh, and we've maintained that, uh, that party going for 18 years, even through the pandemic. Everyone, dun, dun, dun. Last, last year, we were under so much pressure not to have pork fest. We were under pressure not just from the authoritarians or from the state, uh, but also from uh, liberty people who were just scared of, you know, especially the ones who are scared about what the blue check people are going to think about liberty, liberty people. Right. Um, and there we had one hero, uh, or should I say heroine, who said, I will be damned if I am not going to be doing pork fest. Uh, so she uh, she said we're going to be doing it, and I was more than happy to to jump right in on it. Uh, my origin story is uh, I, I've been a libertarian for uh, about forty years. Uh, I came from the left. So you know. When you were one, nah. <laughs> <laughs> we actually celebrated his birthday. <laughs> his birthday is at Pork Fest, and if that's not an excuse to throw a party, I don't know what is. Uh, so I came from the left, and I worked for this very arch conservative. He was uh, on the right, and we just we used to just tear into each other uh, at, at a startup, uh, seven days a week, you know, eighteen hours a day. And w uh, when we took breaks, we would just tear into each other. Luckily, we both wanted to be consistent. And uh, he had to give up on uh, not, uh, interventionism and on uh, a body freedom. I had to give up on hating capitalism. Eventually, we came up to something, and we had no name for it. We thought we had invented something new. I remember uh, uh, one morning I was really bored and I was like looking, trying to think of something to distract me. I wanted to come up with our one of our regular arguments. And uh, uh, I, I finally, I couldn't do it. I said, so that's it? We, we, we don't have any disagreements? And, and about an hour later, he says, I can't think of anything. About, uh, about six months later on a Chicago bus in the middle of winter with a slush going back and forth, I was reading a leaflet that was on the bottom of the bus. Uh, uh, upside down and I was, I was reading it and I was going oh my god I picked it up it was dripping wet I jumped out of the bus found a pay phone and said I know what we are there's a word for what we are we're libertarians <laughs> <laughs> so that was the first time I'd ever heard the word I, I don't think I heard it in public for another three years um, and I, 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 I had heard about the, the uh, about Pork Fest and the Free State Project from a friend who was uh, uh, definitely not not libertarian, and because I was such a long libertarian, I thought, well, I, pff, I could dis disregard that. That's that's obviously nothing. And I came up um, uh, 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 a number of years ago. I think it was 2011. Uh, and it, my, it was my birthday. My, my birthday always falls in Pork Fest. And my wife wasn't going to be in town. She said, well, why don't you do something you really want to do? I said, well, I've always thought about going up there. I'll just go up for the day. And I came up for the day. And I had lived in New York, New Jersey, Chicago, Boulder, and Boston. And all of a sudden, I was amongst people that I didn't have to ask, do you think that we own our own bodies? You know, just that basic thing. We, we could start from such a high level. I called my wife that night. I said, honey, listen, I'm having a really good time. I said I'd be home, but I'm, I'm going to stay one more day. And the next night I called up and said, yeah, just one more day, honey. And, it, and I stayed the whole week. Yeah. Uh, and I <laughs> yes, was just <laughs> so relieved, so relieved. Um, I didn't really think that we would move up here, but, but we, my, my wife actually is the one who decided. She said, yeah, I know you really want to move up here. I, th I thought it was too big an ask. And she said, yeah, you know, we'll move. So I've been up here for two and a half years. And you can see. After two and a half years, they make you uh, organize pork fest. So <laughs> yes, <Yeah>. they do. <laughs> when, when you're as wonderful as you are, yes. <laughs> and this is like this is one of the the great experiments in liberty because in and one of the reasons one of the many reasons I love it is like the caricature of libertarians is kind of that Randian stand alone <laughs> and and you know the caricature is falsely like do whatever you want. 
and just go climb a mountain somewhere and, and <laughs> be away from things. But of course, even in Rand's novels, it always leads to building a community, right? Mm. Right. Yep. And uh, and this is the, the you know the 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 opposite side of the coin of individualism is how we how we gather in voluntary cooperation and thrive for all yeah. of our our differences and weirdnesses and there's yeah. plenty of difference and weirdness here yes of thank, course thank you very much because that is the human condition yeah. right but what? it's it's a it's a place where we sort of feed off of each other yeah. like and that's what a good community does like yeah. there's cooperation uh there's there's certainly some competition particularly when it comes to ideas but it's it's just a it's just a great place to be. Yeah. I'm giving a talk tomorrow on libertarian communitarianism because I consider myself a communitarian li- yeah. libertarian. Yeah. Um, and I, I argue that, that uh, you know, that there, uh, authoritarians make, do all these really, really clever, clever, sophistic tricks in order to win the argument without even discussing the topic. And one of the things that they've done is they've conflated uh, authoritarianism with community. Mm-hmm. And libertarianism with being isolated and lonely. Mm. Right. Well, my whole life, what I do is I create large communities. But they are, they are all voluntary. They're all win-win. They're all consensual. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I, 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 you know, I, I argue that, uh, that the, the community that authoritarians are talking about, that's not a community. That's a penal colony. Yes. Right. You know, only with libertarianism can you actually have real community. And I have to say a testament to Dennis's work this year. I think what he did that was uniquely why we're seeing the largest pork fest ever. Now, of course, we're seeing it for several reasons. Totalitarianism it was a growth sector for libertarians, right. right? It's they clamp down more. You know, we're, more of us are going to be formed. But what he did that was so genius is he reached out to smaller groups of people. So instead of kind of going we need all the libertarians to come to New Hampshire. He was like, who are my top 200 people? And how can I get them to get 10 or 20 or 30 of their best friends to also come, right? So we have over the years, and certainly back when I was main organizer, you know, we tried to do this sort of decentralized approach. We have these fantastic talks down in the pavilion. We've got the Bardo Community Farm and the, please, you know, come buy a house, part of it but really the heart i think and the one we've really really nailed this year is this right like even having you guys here and you doing your media but you know if you look over this campground they're just you know how many hubs are there so there's 90 hubs we have uh, uh 500 events on the schedule and another 200 that are not on the schedule uh we have 25 <laughs> <I know nothing. laughs> we have uh 2500 uh uh over 2500 attendees uh who are actually logged in attendees uh and we're not doing day passes you know they, these are, are people who are really here and we're two to one uh potential migrants mm. to uh porcupines uh, and, people are already here. And we already have tickets on sale for 2022, <laughs> which we've actually never managed to do before either. And I, think I people, insisted on that. Yeah, and I think we shouldn't <laughs> lose sight of the fact, you know, we're running on pork power here, right? We're all volunteers. Mm. You know, we are just people who are so passionate about this. You know, I saw your Liberty Curious t-shirt and... I don't know if I'm right that I coined it, but I do remember using that years and years and years ago on stage. And everyone was like, that's smart because that's what people are, right? Like if you don't quite know where you fit in yet. And I believe curiosity is the antidote to statism, Mm -hmm. right? Like we don't actually have to persuade everyone we're right. In fact, I think when we try to do that, we fail. Yeah. Because no one likes getting preached at. And face it, we're the kind of people who, you know, generally think, if not are, the smartest person in the room. And we're pedantic. And we could kind of be jerks and whatever, right? So if you can turn people on by just making them curious. I mean, what's more fun than going down a rabbit hole where you're like, the conclusion is liberty, but you came to it yourself. You know, it was, it was Penn Jillette. I had Penn Jillette on the show, and he's just fantastic, and he's a great interview because all you have to do is say hi, and he just <laughs> But I, I used, I think I used the word, you know, how do we persuade people? And he corrected me in a, in a profound way that stuck with me, and I, I'm not really in the business of convincing or persuading I mean, I, I sort of call it leading by example, mm. and it's the same thing as curiosity. Like, I think people should make up their own minds about everything, 
and I'm not here to say that I've got it figured out and you're not smart enough to understand where I'm coming from. And I think a lot of libertarians fall into this right. trap where we sort of talk down to people. Um, but this is like, it's not a social experiment. It is, it is a community and people can see how things function and how people cooperate and they respect each other's rights and, and like this, this grand experiment of asking people to pick up their families and move to a different place yeah. and live like that's a big ask it's mm. it's you know I, I i have all the jokes right so one of them is like it's worse than selling timeshare i mean it's a big <laughs> ask right and then of course the one criticism we do here geographically is a lot of people say it's too cold and i'm like if anyone's saying it's too cold i'm like it's still warmer than mars <laughs> <laughs> and and by the way, you're packing. I am packing. And that's that's part of the standard, uh, not not standard, but there's a lot of of open carry at Porkfest. There is, but you know, I also want to say, you know, last year when we did our very historic Porkfest, I actually I did reach out. Um, you know, I've always invited the governor. Um, I didn't invite him this year, really, genuinely because of an oversight. They never come, but you know. Right. I grew up in a diplomatic household, and my dad was a diplomat for the apartheid regime. So, you know, I learned propaganda on my parents' knee kind of thing, right? And I see a lot of what I'm doing here as a diplomatic mission. So I do want someone like the governor to come. I mean, people might throw tomatoes at him. I could see why he wouldn't want to come. But I clearly expressed last year, I said, look, you know, you guys do what you got to do. He did lock down the state, but he put in an exception on every single executive order that if you read it, if you're contract driven and you read the paperwork, there was an out and the out was like you could drive a dump truck through it. So I think that was like the give to the liber liberty people. Yeah. He was appeasing on the one hand and sort of giving this thing on the other hand. But what I said is, look, this is a First Amendment and Second Amendment protected assembly. And I don't say that to be a badass. You know, our rights are our rights for a reason. But I will tell you in New Hampshire, I think, you know, we're, we're figuring out this relationship because they're like, we can't roll in and just, you know, come in here and be like, well, you know, who is doing what and what's going on? Because yeah. no one wants to tee up that situation. Yeah. And quite frankly, I mean, the law enforcement in town I meet with them before we have it. You know, we have our rules set up. You know, they don't come in without Crosby, the property owner, inviting them. You know, I was like, yeah, it's like vampires. <laughs> and then the cop was like, okay, <laughs> I don't know how I feel about being called a vampire, but I was like, I understand the rule now, you yeah. know. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, you know, people are people are armed, and that's partly just to make sure that, you know, we, we assert our rights, rights that aren't asserted are lost. See, I love it. So I don't have to carry because right. I know that I'm in the safest place perhaps in the universe you right now. You probably <laughs> are, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, it's, uh, and, and it's just part of the, the, the beautiful weirdness of it all because um, you, have, you have a ton of pacifists here, including the ones that are heavily armed. Right. And, of course, non uh, certain people would never understand that concept. But you mentioned the governor, and I, and, and I want to segue to this because I think it was you that shared on social media a recording of the governor complaining. Mm. I don't know if he named the Free State Project by name, but he was complaining about libertarians taking over the, the GOP in New Hampshire. Yeah. And, <laughs> and you're like, uh, yeah, that's what we're doing. <laughs> talk, about, talk about that because there's, there's other strategies here, and, I, and I'll, we'll touch on them like – a big part of the Free State Project, as I understand it, is agorism, which means I'm just going to go live free. Right. Mm. And I'm not going to worry about the government. And then there are people that want to take over the Republican Party and, and actually insist that they, they live up to that liberty rhetoric that they love to use mm -hmm. but never follow through on. <laughs> and then there's big L libertarians. Yep. Mm. And then there's gun rights guys. And then there's mm. about a thousand other categories mm. of strategy. But let's talk about let's talk about the success that free staters have had as part of this attempt to, to reimagine the, the Republican Party in, in New Hampshire? Yeah, so, I mean, uniquely in New Hampshire, we, you know, it's a live free or die state. The Republicans are fairly, cons uh, you know, consistent with the libertarian platform. In fact, I've run for office now three times, and I got 45% of the vote as a Republican in the last election. And that's, you know, my, my numbers keep eking up. So people actually meet me and then decide to vote for me because the first run 
was 39%. And that was literally just having an R next to my name. Now, had I run just straight LP, I would have gotten 3%. I would have been discouraged and I would have stopped. Now I'm like, well, my numbers keep going up, right? So on that particular call with the governor, uh, that was a, a, a tight group GOP, like insider. So the fact that we even got access to that leaked stuff, I think tells you that people's loyalties are being swayed. I think he was pandering because, you know, Chris Sununu is a great politician. I mean, you know, I, I take notes. I'm like, he'll go, oh, you're upset about the cops. Let's get a task force. And then, you know, he'll put 40 people in the room and then everyone seems to be like, oh, we're doing something. But, you know, so he's playing politics. They are frustrated because we have just enough in the Liberty Caucus or the Freedom Caucus in the House to jam stuff up. Now, I will say this, that when I heard that clip and when I heard that, you know, I was like, well, you know, you can pick your battles here because you can push us out, which is not going to happen because we know the strategy we're following is working. So mm -hmm. why would we change it? Um, but there was a race that happened maybe five, six years ago. Uh, Kelly Ayotte was running for Senate, Congressional Senate, and Aaron Day, who at the time was on the board of the Free State Project, um, they passed under Republicans, they passed Medicaid expansion. And we told them categorically, if you do that, you're going to regret it. Now, we don't have enough sway to beat them, but we have enough sway to screw them. Yeah. So he pulled 20,000 votes and the Democrat won. And we haven't been able to unseat her. Now, I'm not happy with her either, but the point is we do have just enough influence now that people have to take us seriously. But for me, again, diplomacy, how do we work together? How do we get the things we want? I laughed, someone posted in the Republican, one of the groups after, Sununu's, uh, you know, little, I don't like the libertarians, you should pick your own party thing. Um, someone posted, and I think it was a genuine question, and he said, what is the difference between a libertarian and a Republican? And I was like, well, a libertarian always wants to shrink government. A Republican wants to shrink the government they don't like and expand the government they do, right? They're, we're not with them on war and anti-war and that kind of stuff. And, and people were like, yeah, that's actually a pretty good distinction, right? We don't distinguish between what our interests are. We don't have special interests other than the individual. So I have a fun Sununu story that just pops to mind hearing this. And um, when I was a 20-something economist, I worked at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, and we had a Bush for a president who decided to break a no new taxes pledge. And mm. as the budget director for the U.S. Chamber, I was writing all this stuff trashing the Republican tax e increase plan. And I proudly, successfully got uh, John Sununu, chief of staff to President Bush, to call up the president of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and threaten to cut his balls off with a chainsaw. Whoa! <laughs> and what's awesome about that is I didn't get fired. And I think I think maybe a couple years later I would have got fired from the chamber for, for upsetting someone for raising taxes. but. Mm. Um, so, Dennis, where are you? Like, sorry about that random tangent, but it's I've always wanted to tell that story. Dennis, where are you on? Like, what's the what's the medius part of the free state strategy is because because this is one strategy, right? It's not it's not everything. Well, I, I actually I want to put I, I want to make a, a, a little uh, footnote here. Uh, the free state project, all it's doing, it has only one function. It says come to New Hampshire if you are liberty oriented. Come to New Hampshire and help us build New Hampshire. The Free State Project is fairly neutral about how that is mm. going to look. Yeah. Now, Carla wears multiple hats. Yeah, my wees are just, <laughs> my wees are all royal. <laughs> <laughs> so she wears multiple hats, but it's not a Free State Project strategy to, to, to uh, uh, go into the uh, uh, Republican Party or to mm. support the Libertarian Party or, or any of that type of stuff. All the Free State Project is saying, come and, 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 and stop being so isolated. Stop being so besieged and, and uh, disparaged for, for what is really a, a beautiful thought about how we could live together in harmony, right? In consensual, voluntary, win-win harmony. 
Uh, and, 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 and how we do that, though, when, once we get here, it's just amazing to me because we bring in so, such a, a myriad of libertarians. And some are very political and some say, you know, I really want pol uh, political wins now. I'm going to go for the Republican. The Libertarian Party in New Hampshire has just gone through a major uh, uh, drama. Uh, Oh, a major so much, revolution, so drama, yeah. a major of because I came here as a libertarian. I, I, you know, I I've I've never voted Republican. Right. I, I don't. I mean, to me, voting Republican would just I, I, I would. It's hard for me You'd to break do that. out. In a it's hard for yeah. me to do that. I've only voted Democrat, uh, socialist or libertarian. Would it be hard for you to do if you're voting for the candidate you like? Well, I mean, that's I've that's exactly it. This might so, get right. awkward, but would you vote for Carla? I've. <laughs> Is second. As Please a matter of fact, yes. as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, I've, I've, I've given her money for her please, campaign. Please, so. has please clap. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so being here and understanding what a, uh, a liberty Republican is, as opposed to a Republican, yeah. is is it's just a different animal. So I mean, your audience thinking that we're vo that we're voting Republican, they don't understand mm -hmm. yeah. what New Hampshire liberty Republicans well, it's, it's mean. A, it's, it's values and an ethos, and you're describing. Right the ethos of the free state project, which um, I always thought was the American ethos. No. Like yeah. be whoever you are. That's right. And 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 we sort of celebrated that and it's it's only, you know, in the last five years I've I've wondered whether or not that is the ethos because it seems like we've gotten so tribal and we, we have mm. to destroy the other team. And, right. I right. mean, I think a lot yeah, of that is But that comes from the top media. down, right? But I think it's also social media. I think that, um, I don't know if you guys remember this, but there was an experiment maybe like two years ago where they wrote an AI algorithm and they put the algorithm out on Twitter and it was self-learning. That was the point. It was supposed to look at, you know, tweets and then create a personality. And within two days, that AI algorithm was a Nazi. <laughs> like, writing like the most heinous stuff, right? And I, since then, you know, and my background is, I'm a lawyer, right? But I, I worked only for software companies in Silicon Valley when we immigrated. You know, I worked for Apple and Logitech, Borland, and, and, you know, I'm like, I think the AI got out of the, I think the AI has escaped and some of this nonsense and this frequency and this noise is is just, it's, it's not real. And then another thing I wanted to mention, for the longest time, I think, because I'm adverse to drama, I'm a, let's make it happy, let's make it fun, let's make it all of those things. And so for the longest time, I'd be like, ah, oh, drama. But then it occurred to me the other day, I was like, what is a newspaper? I was like, that's literally just other people's drama, yeah. right? Yeah. And I was like, why am I reading about Biden or Trump's drama or Hassan's drama or even Chris Sununu? I mean, Chris Sununu's drama might be me. I might be his drama, right? But I was like, no, we should actually care about our own drama mm. and not care at all about other people's no. drama. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and so, so the people who come here... They, they have so many different strategies uh, uh, about how we can actually achieve liberty in our, our lifetime. And, you know, the, there, there is the, you know, infiltrate the Republicans and make changes. And I have to say, I would have given that a low probability chance. And they have been so successful that I just keep throwing money at them. I just go, keep going. Because I, I could never do that. Look, they yeah. did primary me this time. So, you know, let's see what happens in this in, in, in the next round. I'm only going to do it one more time, and then I'm going to start running for president of New Hampshire. And that's my plan. <laughs> one more Senate run, and then the, I'm just the going to do New something Hampshire. else. <laughs> but it, it, it's just so great to see all the different strategies. Um uh, that of uh, the people who come here and they say, okay, you know, agorism is a solution, or crypto is the solution, um, or the Libertarian Party is the solution, Families, or the secession is the solution, you know? unschooling, yeah, yeah you have know, developing strong families and strong communities, uh, freedom cells are the solution. Uh, so it's interesting to see, and it's all just really putting down bets, because I can tell you, Ooh, we should start that if we knew what the solution was. I would be all in on that yeah. solution. I would just go, I mean, here's everything I've done. <laughs> you know, I mean, we argue forever because we think that we know the solution. None of us have a crystal ball. Yeah. Um, uh, so I like that, that, that the Free State Project is agnostic as to how. 
I like that we're, the Free State Project is doing the really hard job of asking people to migrate here who are li li libertarians. If you think about it, all migrations in the past have been migrations of communities coming together, mm -hmm. Yeah. right? So uh, the Mormons are being uh, 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 besieged and, and, and uh, vilified and attacked, um, and they go, we can't stand it here. So they get up as a community and they all come over. Well, libertarianism appears very randomly and is not is not in the same family is not in 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 the community right so so you have to actually say okay look you you have to come here without your community without your set of friends although i don't know how you can consider somebody who's willing to put you into a uh, jail or have you killed for disagreeing with preferences about your own body a friend right. i think that there's a minimum friendship requirement uh, that, that says, you know, you will not harm me if we have a difference of opinion about my own body. Right. Okay? Right. But, but unfortunately, authoritarians disagree with that. Right. Well, but I you have they... to leave. You have to leave these so-called friends. You have to leave these families. You have to leave your community and come to a place and you hope that you can actually make community. Yeah. Well, we're making community. We have community centers. I created, a, 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 with a, a number of other people, we created a, yet another community center. And we're going to have a whole necklace of community centers up and down the place. We have these large community events. We have different communities around agorism and crypto. and So, so whatever your area of interest is, and even just an area of investigation, if you're curious at whether this liberty area yeah. is something, you can find a community and, and talk to those people and say, do I fit in here? Do I fit in here? Do I fit? What are the most frustrating things for me was when I first came up here, I said, oh, well, I know I'll, I'll be with these group. I didn't fit. I didn't be with this group. Oh, I didn't fit. I didn't fit. You know, and then all of a sudden I go, OK, I'm fitting in really well with this. This feels like home yeah. for me. And that's like to me, that is sort of the core Austrian insight about civil society is that um, if it could be centrally planned from the top down, um, yeah. I think that would still be a nightmare, but the, the problem is you don't know enough to do such a thing. I got two more things I want to talk about, and then we're running out of time. And I see that you have a book in your hand, Carla. I do indeed. What is that about? So it is the ecstatic pessimist, stories of hope mostly. Um, you know, so I did my MFA in New York uh, in 2008, and so there are some uh, there are some short stories, award-winning short stories. I'm going to brag a little, and then it, there are actually 13 essays about the Free State Project and some of the activism I've done over the years, and that would be things from, you know, going out for DUI checkpoints, right? So. Uh, there's this quaint thing in New Hampshire they have to tell you when they're doing a DUI checkpoint. They advertise it in the newspaper. We look it up and then we send out crews. We put people on the streets. We warn motorists to turn. It's quite popular with everyone except statists. Uh, there was the first pro-tour protest, which is a hard thing to say even when you're sober. Um, and that was the DHS uh, tried to shut down a really small library here in the Upper Valley. Uh, they were running a tour node because it was an open source IT director of this small library. And I was like, this is why New Hampshire is awesome. And so they tried to shut it down. And that was one of those beautiful moments where we literally had, you know, 100 year old Vermont librarians driving out and libertarians with guns, and we were all there saying, you don't get to tell us what we can do with our libraries, right? Yeah. So it has a little bit of everything for anyone. It's on Amazon, it's also on my website, carlagarrick.com. You know, it's a way to show your support. You know, I just take everything I have and I put it back into this. So, you know, you're really just supporting liberty in New Hampshire. Very cool. So, so Dennis, you're gonna close us out and uh, Give me, if you can, the data on how many people have migrated to New Hampshire and make it, make the elevator pitch. Everybody watching here is is suddenly considering moving to New Hampshire mm. because they love liberty. Mm. Well, if you actually think that uh, human freedom is something that's really important, if you think that, uh, that ending human slavery, and I, we've ended private slavery, we have had 6,000 years of slavery to rulers, where rulers could take our bodies, take, uh, take our labor, and take the product of our labor. And if you're saying, look, slavery is evil, 
And I want to live in a society where we do not have that. Come to New Hampshire and help us build a model society for that, that, that does not rely on slavery at all. Slavery to, uh, to rulers or, or, or private slavery. That, that relies only on consensual relationships, on voluntary relationships. Uh, and, and then we can demonstrate to the world what this thing looks like. I mean, we don't know what it looks like. We don't know. It's going to be a bottom-up type of thing. And this is an experiment. This is uh, people building it. We need entrepreneurs. We need builders. Uh, you know, the people, we, the people I, I, I always get a little bit discouraged about are the people who say, oh, well, I'm not going to move to uh, New Hampshire because on this one issue, because the this, pod state, laws aren't good. Because like, this, this state here, uh, this, this policy area here is better in this state. Well, it's not a point in time. We are a vector. And if you look at where New Hampshire is, it's a point that's really good, and the vector is going to freedom. And you coming here increases that vector to freedom. And we want people to, who are going to come here and increase that, that vector to freedom and actually create something and demonstrate to the world that we do not need to be the owned property of rulers. And the people watching this, Carla, can sign up to come to Porkfest next year. So we don't have to trust Dennis. They have to come <laughs> and check it out for their own damn selves. Yes, I, I, I encourage everyone to come. We do know that anyone who comes to Porkfest, most people come back again. Uh, movers are transformed once they come to Porkfest. So that's really an experience. People come, they meet the community, they see it works for them, and then they move. And honestly, not everyone's going to move. We get it, right? But if you can't move, give us some money. You know, support people's races. Follow us on social media you know pay attention because what you know it's it's a phrase uh, that Dennis likes to use that I use too we're trying to build this libertarian mecca right it's this little planet this little free planet that can prove it mm. is possible so that we can say to the naysayers you have it wrong yeah. of course a consent based society can work because the alternative actually sounds a little lunatic I mean, it sounds crazy, ludicrous, right? Yeah. To be like, no, there's this one group of people who can tell everyone what to do. Why? So, yes, I encourage everyone to come. Our tickets are on sale for next year. Porkfest.com forward slash 2022. If people want to know more about the Free State Project, fsp.org. And then, of course, follow us on social. Yeah. And and come to visit us outside of Porkfest. Uh, you know, anytime, oh, that you, anytime that you want to come, you go to fsp.org. There's a calendar on there, and we have events every single day. Come up to our, our community centers and take take part. We do Come comedy to, shows. We do comedy shows. Where we have dances. We have uh, longest running Bitcoin crypto meetup in the world. Longest running consecutive Bitcoin meetup in the world. <laughs> I think it's on like it's. Hundredth or something. I mean, yeah. it's something bananas long. Yeah. We have the only satellite for the Soho Forum. We're going to create more connections with other uh, other liberty organizations. So, you know, uh, what you're seeing right now in New Hampshire is just the start. Yep. We are going to be building this up internally, and then we're going to be building up with connections to all the liberty organizations. And if you really love liberty and you want to help us build, please come. Thank you both. Amen. That was amazing. Where can I get more content just like that? It's a great question. You're clearly a discerning consumer of the best content. Make sure to like the video, subscribe, and click the bell. And if you're consuming podcasts, go to Apple, Stitcher, anywhere you get them. I'm in. Kibbe on Liberty, honest conversations with interesting people.